It, it's quite a big deal, I think. Um, it, it's an opportunity that you can only really get at CSM. You know, there's quite a good camaraderie between the team and it's really enjoyable. We get the, uh, the opportunity of, of a lifetime, really. At that point, I was ready. And when I mean I was ready, I was ready to go. I was really anxious, actually. Like, I felt ill. It, there really was just a feeling of, this is it, like, this is what we trained for. We get to, we're going to Australia tomorrow. Like, yes, oh, you know. So the Intercollegiate Mining Games is held in memory of the Sunshine Mining Disaster and the 91 fatalities uh, during the accident. The Mining Games are seven different old school mining um, techniques and it's to keep them alive really. We are the only people that still uh, use these techniques. It's important for us now with how um, modern mining is, losing that, that old school hand in style and instead going more mechanised. Um, with big trucks, bigger, bigger trucks every year. And it just goes back to the, uh, the way it was done when there was men underground doing everything manually. So the events are uh, track stand, hand drilling, panning, surveying with a field light, jack leg drilling, swede saw and hand muck. The um, games have expanded over the years. It starts off just being an American competition with the initial competition having five different schools. Campbell School of Mines first entered in 2004 and we are currently the only British team to compete, hence why we compete under the Team Great Britain. So we train twice a week and uh, we started training right at the start of term uh, when all the freshers join in. There's never really a normal day at training, there's always something going on. We'll all pile into the cars and drive on over, get your boots on, get your kit on and you're like, oh gosh, it's bloody cold today. Once we arrive at King Edward, um, open up the container. Uh, first thing to normally get pulled out of the container is mine carts. The two mine carts are then rolled over to the track that normally takes two to three people. You also need to take the shovels over to the uh, track because that's the setup for the mucking event. So we'll uh, all, all be around the, around the tracks and um, encourage each other with, with the mucking. Very uh, physically intensive, so it's a good way to start, put you under fatigue and put you on the back foot a little bit. And then we go to a bit more technical. Uh, we'll go to a track stand, we'll split off normally, track stand, hand steel, gold panning. And then we'll, we'll saw. It's normally all hands on deck from most people and all the time whilst you're training, you're building camaraderie with the rest of your teammates, um, which is a really valuable part of it, but it doesn't mean the training's any easier. And the competition is just the day to prove yourself. So getting picked was amazing, turning up to Falmouth. <laughs> I was so nervous, so stressed, like, oh my god, what's going to go wrong? We all sat down, everyone was all getting ready, having their breakfast. So that made me feel a bit better, a bit more at home, like, okay, it's chill, we're all chill, we're chilling. You sit on the bus and you're like, oh. And then everything just went. And I was like, you know what, this is it. I'm excited now. Oh, you know, we get off the bus and we've got to walk ages to the hotel. It, there really was just a feeling of, this is it, like, this is what we trained for. We get to, we're going to Australia tomorrow. Like, oh, yes. Uh, get to the airport, international terminal. It's always fun and games when you're trying to travel with 13 people. Um, we're very fortunate we got a direct flight to Perth. Now we flew through, no problems. We got an afternoon flight um, from Perth to Kalgoorlie. Yeah, it was definitely a change of scenery. Uh, kind of hit by a wall of, wall of orange, very dusty, very mining town. All the, um, all the light vehicles from the mine sites with, with the flags and stuff all on, uh, just being casually driven down the road. The night before the competition all started, we had our um, welcome dinner. Uh, it was nice to meet all the competitors, familiar faces uh, from previous years. Um, and there's a few industry um, leaders there as well. So it was nice to chat with those guys, make the most of the opportunity. We then led into uh, practice day the next morning. Walking onto the comp grounds, I was absolutely just like petrified because you see everyone doing their things already they're practicing you're like oh i don't know where to start to add to it you've got the heat you've got you know sweat dust um flies crawling all over your face you know it's in the baking sun no it's, it's good to see everyone there and, and it is busy and we um we met up with our alumni team they kind of followed around with us so we had the men's women's and alumni all going around practicing our events so all in all it was a really good day but yeah it was good to really get our fun lion and and a final chance to, 
to do anything before main day, comp day. The excitement was brewing on uh, comp day, nice early morning start. Um, we shuttled ourselves over to the comp grounds, which was about a 10 minute drive away. You could tell the excitement was uh, really building between all the teams. We found ourselves a nice little spot, shaded spot, put our base up there. We started off with jack leg drilling, probably one of the better ones to start with. Quite physical, probably one of the most dangerous ones. Um, just for the force that is built up in the, uh, the air leg. Um, you can snap steels, send shrapnel flying everywhere. Uh, yeah, I don't need to tell you, that's not a good idea. So, saw on comp day was a bit of a whirlwind, let's say. Saw's a, a very, very anaerobic exercise. As soon as that saw touches the wood, you're putting your all in. I myself uh, fractured my knuckle in the uh, competition by punching the wood. You're, you're, you're pushing, you're pulling, using your body weight to pull that saw down. I cut in and I don't know if it was the saw or if it was me putting too much top pressure down, but the saw, the blade just bent like that. It was frustrating because you're so full of adrenaline and you really want it to just, just get through it. So I swapped for the spare saw, but as soon as that timer had finished, and the judge goes, I've just got to go and check that you swapping saws isn't a DQ. It's just like, oh crap, like this is, what if I've done something wrong here? What if I've messed it up? But he comes back and he's like, it's, it's, not, it's not a DQ, you guys did great. We weren't disqualified, we had a good time. And yeah, I'm glad everyone was there to really rally around and, you know, do what a team does and help someone out when they're having a bit of a moment. Yeah, comp day mucking was uh, an intense ordeal. i just come off dropping my pellets on the uh, gold pan. That's one of those things where you get caught up in all the anticipation beforehand. We know how to muck, we know how to screen. We do everything as Campbell does it, yeah. and that's 100%. You get a little bit of nerves going through. You just those final doing. seconds of, oh, what if? And then the cart goes down the tracks, and we were ready to knock anything dead. As soon as that cart went down on the side, I got the shovel in, the adrenaline just kicked in and it went, it felt so light. There was dust everywhere, whipping round, going into the cart, just doing the best we could ever do. Two minutes, nine seconds, we were elated. We were over the moon, in arms with all, all the other guys on the mucking team, and it's I couldn't wish for anything better. Your legs hurt, your arms hurt, everyone was on it. It's exactly what we needed to do. It is a good feeling, it's my favorite event, for sure. Competition day finished with an award ceremony, and this was for all divisions. Uh, so it was a real good mix of everybody in the dinner. That's where we received our, um, our first place in the surveying trophy, our third place in muck. So it was nice to get some belt buckles. The women did really well. They were up every event, podium and everything. It was such a good feeling. It was really like, we knew we'd done pretty well. We were like, well, you work so hard for it. Dedicate so many hours of your week to it. And to go there, do it, and come second. All the way from the United Kingdom. Yeah. It was just like, you just, you know, you scream, and you're like, whoa, you know, like, God, I, we got it, we did it. Camborne came second. The women's team absolutely killed it, every single one of us. And to be able to go back with, you know, seven belt buckles and one little medallion that says women's division, second place, it was such a feeling. So from me to the judges, and to all the competitors, thank you. Campbell School of Mines is a very old mining school. It started up in 1888. It, it's always been a world-renowned school. University of Exeter bought out uh, Campbell School of Mines to expand their, their campuses and the courses they could offer. So currently the third year BNG mining engineering students are the last mining engineering students to graduate from CSM. It's a family, it's, it is a community. It's, it's been that way since the beginning. You know, if you look down a hole in the ground, you will find a Cornish miner. That's, that's especially a Campbell School of Mines graduate. We don't get just a degree certificate, you are part of a family and everyone here is there to support each other and to have each other's backs.